It's Tisha B'Av. It's Tisha B'Av again. I thought it was going to be a yontif. Like we always say, right? Like when Mashiach comes, Tisha B'Av will be a happy day. When you hear Tisha B'Av, what's the first thing you think about? Uh, the Beis HaMikdash. The Beis HaMikdash. The Beis What else? Uh, the fast. The fast day, that's right. I can't wear my favorite shoes. What about you? Yeah. Till I'm sitting on the floor. There are so many no, 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 no's, right? And now, here we are, and it's like Tisha B'Av, and this is really hard because everyone around us is grumpy. The adults are all fasting, I'm sitting on the floor, and we say, I want to do this, I want to do that, and then we might say, I want to have ice cream, and they're like, no, it's not the type today, it's Tisha B'Av. So like, what is going on? I didn't learn so much about Tisha B'Av when I was a kid. Do you know why? Do you know why? Why do you think? Because in the summer you don't have school and you can't learn about it. That's right. In the summertime, you're in camp, hello. Who here is in camp? And do you learn about Tisha B'Av in camp? Yeah, I do. Maybe a little bit, right? Yeah. A little you learned in Tisha B'Av about camp? Uh, uh, actually, a lot. People don't know all the details. That's right. So who's ready to hear some details? Me. All right, all right. Yeah. I want you all to try to think about something that would be different for when Mashiach comes. Anything that's hard for you, or anything that's sad for all of the Jewish people. And we are going to work on making a stone to help us rebuild the Chomos Yerushalayim, the walls of Yerushalayim. If you're at home, get any paper, we already cut the corners and rounded the edges, so it looks like a Jerusalem stone, like a, one of the stones that you'll find in Yerushalayim. Think of something that's sad now that will be better with Mashiach. Think of your own idea and then put it down onto the paper. And then we're going to look at them afterwards and see what all of us can try to connect with. Like, what's that thought in your mind of something that's sad now, that's so painful for either you or someone you know or someone you heard of? in the Jewish people, and then that thing is going to be not a problem anymore when Mashiach comes. I won't, I won't have scary dreams that night, and this is without the Beis HaMikdash, like when then I have scary dreams now, and then without when the Beis HaMikdash is here, then like in the future, then I would have good dreams. Now, a lot of incredible miracles happened in our Beis HaMikdash. The, during the first Beis HaMikdash and during, there was also a second Beis HaMikdash. A lot of incredible miracles happened there every single day. Do you know that? Even if it was raining, the fires on the Zbech never went out. That's right. Even if it was raining, the fires on the Zbech never went out. And they say that, you know, like there was tons of meat like always, because they were doing carbanos. And, and the flies wouldn't like get near. How did you, oh my, another amazing fact. That's right, the flies would not come near. Normally, if you keep meat out, try it. Take out meat on your counter and leave it out. What's gonna happen? Flies. flies. In two seconds, me. right? Um, and if the ashes fell on the floor, the floor would just fall open. Unbelievable. So people were used to seeing miracles, right? And we're not used to that. But when Mashiach comes, guess what? We'll be used to it. We'll be living in a world of miracles. We will literally be living in a time of miracles. Now, let me tell you the magical story of Eicha. This is crazy, okay? Eicha was written thousands of years ago during the time of the first Beis HaMikdash. There was a Navi. Does anyone here know what a Navi is? Oh my gosh, looks like everyone knows what a Navi is. Let's hear, Shua, what's a Navi? Uh, someone that could talk to Hashem. Someone that could talk to Hashem, which we all can talk to Hashem, really, right? But what's the difference with the Navi? He probably learns a lot of Torah. He probably learns a lot of Torah to be on that level, but Shua, exactly, Shua, you knew that, right? Hashem can speak to him, 
That's right. But right now, imagine the rabbi of your shul comes to you and says, Hashem told me something. Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, yeah. Would you listen? Yeah. yeah. You think you would? But I'm going to tell you something that's going to make you a little sad. Are you ready? Moshe Rabbeinu is the biggest Navi. Moshe Rabbeinu was the biggest Navi. That was a really smart comment. Kiss your brain. Um, so anyways, this Navi, his name was Yirmiyahu. You guys might be surprised to hear this, but when Hashem told him things and he would go and announce it to all the Jews, like a Navi does, the Jews did not listen. And Yirmiyahu's job was to tell the Jewish people, do teshuva. But Yirmiyahu, he told the Jews for 40 years, he warned the Jews. Like, does anyone know someone who's 40 years old? Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. I know someone. Yeah. Yeah? Maybe your dad, maybe your uncle. Older than Even 40. older than 40? I know, I know a lot older. of people. Yeah? I mean, yeah. tell me. And Salma's very old. She's like almost. She's 90. Yeah, she's almost 100. But imagine for. My grandpa. So imagine your father's whole lifetime. That's 40 years, okay? I know someone who's and for 40 years older than 40 years. What is that? 40 plus 40? 80. Bingo! You're good at math. All right. So Yirmiyahu would warn the people, and he said to them, Do teshuva. Not only did they not listen, they hurt him. They teased him, and they put him in jail. True story. They put him in jail. The king at the time was Yehoiakim. He was a Jewish king. And he unfortunately made a lot of bad choices. And instead of saying, guys, listen to Yermiyahu, listen to what he did. So while Yermiyahu was in jail, Hashem came to him, because he was a... Navi. Hashem came to him and he said, Yermiyahu, I want you to get someone to write this down. So he, Yermiyahu went and he had a, a student named Baruch ben Nuriya, And Yermiyahu said, he, he called a messenger to come to the jail. Baruch ben Nuriya came to jail, good question. And he brought a scroll, you know, those like old fashioned parchments. And a quill and an ink and quill. Like, like, you know, like the roll-up things. Like a fruit roll-up, but like in a paper. And, uh, correct. That's a better example than a fruit roll-up. Right? And the Megillah. And the Megillah. Exactly. Well, it was going to be a Megillah. Now, I want you to visualize this, okay? Hashem told Yermiahu what to write. Yermiahu told Baruch what to write on the scroll. And the, these things that he was writing ended up becoming the words of Eicha, the words of the Megillah. The words of Eicha are very sad words. But you have to understand, the people living at the time of Yermiahu did not want to hear sad things. They were like, impossible, that can never happen to us. Because what he was writing was in the future. The scroll was taken before the king Yehoiakim. And the king was in his winter palace. He had a fancy palace, and it was winter time. And he sat next to this like gorgeous, big fireplace. Because he was cold. They didn't have heaters in those days sat near the fire. And his servants came and said, well, you got to hear what this Baruch ben Neriah wrote in the name of Yirmiyahu. You got to hear. He said, this is the next Nevuah. So he said, read it to me. So they start reading the words of Eicha and they read about how it's going to be the temple, the Beis HaMikdash will be destroyed and it's going to be terrible and it's going to be awful. And he's like, stop reading. That's impossible. That can never happen. And not just that. Give me that paper. He took the Megillah, Eicha, and he burned it in the fireplace. Nobody cared. And so they all got punished very badly. But Hashem came to Yermiyahu again while he was in jail. And to Yermiyahu, the whole thing again. And this time with a few more sad words that Hashem added in, this Megillas Echa ended up coming true. Because it's a Nevuah. And Navis say the truth of Hashem. Yeah. Um, also when you see a Torah, like almost heading the four years after. That's right, if a Torah falls, that's right. Now, you have to realize, there was still another 18 years. Remember I told you this was 18 years before it actually happened. And he kept warning the Jews, and he kept warning the Jews, and no one listened. Now, if I stopped here, and I told you that the Beis HaMikdash got destroyed, would you say this is a sad story? Yeah. Are you starting to feel like you wish they made a better choice? Yeah. yeah. I wish I could stop here, but I can't. When the Beis HaMikdash was in flames, up in smoke, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babel, came with his 
angry men and took away all the, a lot of the Jews from Yerushalayim. They were broken and they were suffering and they were hurt and beaten and being schlepped. And Yirmiyahu saw them and he still cared about them because he's a tzaddik, right? And they looked at him and they said, Yirmiyahu, don't go, don't go. And he started crying. And that was the first time in all of the years of Yirmiyahu warning them, do teshuva, that they cried. Those tears are powerful. And Yirmiyahu looked at them and he said, my fellow brothers, if you would have cried like that even one time in the last 40 years, this whole destruction maybe would not have happened. I remember when I was about your age, I was like 10 years old. I went to shul and the lady sitting on the floor next to me in shul while listening to the words of the Megillah of Eicha was crying so much that her makeup, like, you know, like I wear eyeliner. So her makeup was dripping down her face and there were like black lines coming down her face. And she didn't care. She wasn't even embarrassed. And she was crying. And I don't know why, because I didn't know who she was. She was a stranger. But I remember thinking, wow, whatever she's going through must be awful. I don't know why she's crying. Maybe she wants to get married. Maybe she wants children. Maybe she's crying because someone she knows is not well. Maybe she's crying for any reason. But I was like, that lady is doing what she's supposed to do on Tisha There once was a prince with a fire in his eyes And a palace he built of his dreams With towering visions of chasing the skies And the glory he'd bring to his king But one day a black cloud of evil set in A storm washed the palace away in the wind And all that's left is the When Mashiach comes, there's going to be no more need for police officers and like all the people that like are always, because there's no more bad in the world. Just giving you a little taste of what it might be like when Mashiach comes. It will be like, okay? In Israel, in the year 1967, which was a long time ago, it was before I was born, but maybe your grandparents will remember this. There was a really scary war in Israel. And you know how like Israel is surrounded by Arabs? on all sides and Israel is this really small country so all around Israel were Arab nations 90 million Arabs that were ganging up on Israel and Israel is just this little country but we have Hashem and even though we're in Gullus and even though we don't have a base of Mikdash Hashem makes miracles even for us now right and what happened was is that in six days Hashem let the Jews win so the Israeli army beat out all of the Arabs. The ninth, the Six Day War. That's right. You heard of it. Good. I know it was before that, but there were a lot of terrible things that happened in Israel. But this event, the Six Day War, became so famous 
that like newspapers from all around the world would say, did you hear what happened in Israel? Did you hear what happened in Israel? The Jewish God is alive and strong, right? Everybody was saying the Jewish God, not just that. Listen to this. I'm going to show you. I printed it out. This is a copy, not the real one. I printed it from the computer of a magazine called the Life Magazine. That was like a famous magazine. This was the cover. An Israeli soldier. It says here the date was June 23rd, 1967. And it says, wrap up of the astounding war. Israeli soldier cools off in the Suez Canal. So there's a picture of a victorious Israeli soldier. And he is, you can pass it around, and he is a hero. But not just that. Then they made this picture. This is a silly picture. This is a picture of like what was going around. People just kept talking about the Jews. They were like, they called the Jews superheroes. That's why they made this silly picture of like a man with like a beard and payas with a, <laughs> it's a shin, like um, Superman with a shin, you know? Superman, it's a sin for Superman. Exactly. Oh, it's a sin, not a shin, right, because that would be Superman. But it's, <laughs> what, they, they probably called him like, uh, thank you, sweetie. They probably, they probably called him like super, what would you call him? Super what? So what would you call him? Super what? Super, super Hashidish man. <laughs> super, super yid, right? Like, um, super mensch. That's nerdy. <laughs> Anyways, this was the thing that people were, this is what people were, were looking at. Because the whole world was like, the Jews are heroes. No. But you can pass it around if you want to see it. But it's silly and you can laugh, but I will tell you that after the war of 1967, all of the world realized for that short amount of time that Hashem is one. Hashem does miracles for the Jews. And that's what was important. But when Mashiach comes, that will happen, but way cooler. Right? It will be so magnificent that I don't know, I don't know what they're going to think of next because we're going to, the Jews are going to be viewed as, right? I made the base on Mikdash because then I will get to bring carbonos and see what it looked like. I have a question for you. What would you rather? Would you rather? You ever played would you rather before? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Would you rather? Would you rather be living at the time of Yermiyahu, when everything was perfect and good? You could do whatever you want though, because like we have a Visa Mikdash and it's fun and everything's good and there's a Jewish king, but there's a lot of Averos going on and there's warnings like, do the shuva, do the shuva, do the shuva. Would you be. Would you rather live then and hear that Navua of what's going to happen if you don't behave yourself? Or would you rather be here now, here right now, now even though things are really hard sometimes, but we have another Navua. Do you know about all the Navuas that are also Mashiach. in the Navi? About Mashiach and about Hashem making peace in the world and no more suffering. And those Nebuos can come true any day, in our time. So when would you rather live? Now. 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 What a time to be alive, right? What a time to be alive. And hopefully, if you remember and you spend some time today on Tisha B'Av thinking about ways that we can feel and maybe even cry and connect to the day, and throughout the year, you'll always remember Tisha B'Av a little bit, even when it's not Tisha B'Av, and things are happy and fun and normal. And then hopefully there won't ever be another Tisha B'Av, but if there were to be a Tisha B'Av, we'll know how to cry, because we know how to feel. And this is a kinos over here. This is an art scroll kinos. This is something that a lot of the adults sit down and say on Tisha B'Av, and it's filled with all of the hard, terrible things that happened in our nation's history. So many terrible things. But we won't have to use this anymore, guys. We will be able to put this in the Seamus box, you know? 
Like when you want to get rid of Sparim, you don't throw them in the garbage because they have the name of Hashem. But we won't need it anymore. We need to bury them. Why won't we? Yes, you need to bury it. Why won't we need it anymore? Because Tisha B'Av will be a happy dance. Tisha B'Av will be a yantif, boys. Tisha B'Av will be a yantif, everyone. Please, Hashem, make it be better today.